The Colonel's Bequest, uh, recommended to us by one of our viewers. You know who you are. Thanks very much for the suggestion. Uh, it ended up being a really fun playthrough. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always welcome to hear your guys' recommendations for games we should take a look at. Um, it doesn't mean that we will always do suggestions based on our comments, but please feel free to, to leave a game for us to take a look at, and if it's something that we think looks to be interesting, then you never know. We might uh, end up featuring it in an LP. Yeah. Um, this game in particular really appealed to me because it's a murder mystery, and I love murder mysteries. Um, and it's a Sierra game, so that hits me right in the nostalgia. <laughs> um, in, uh, because it is a Sierra game, uh, originally I wanted to do a blind playthrough. Um, and anyone who's familiar with Sierra would know it became uh, pretty apparent pretty quickly that... I would not be able to get through the game in a timely manner, <laughs> hmm. and you would end up seeing this playthrough uh, probably several years from now. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> but uh, for those of you who do enjoy having a blind experience, I have never seen this game before. I have never even really heard of it, so I've, I've kept myself completely blind, so whatever happens will be kind of the unfiltered uh, reaction from myself. Yeah, um, and my plan is to see if uh, Shaw can figure out what's going on. <laughs> I'll use my, my Holmesian deduction to try and sleuth out the mystery. Yeah, sure you will. <laughs> All right, let's get going. All right. So this game, uh, to start it off, you have to pick the right uh, fingerprint. That's how they uh, had an anti-piracy thing. Uh, the fingerprint came with the box. The copy protection. You got it. All right. Yeah. Okay, there's a will, so my Holmesian deduction, someone is going to die or has died. Or is just writing a will. That too? You, you don't write wills post-mortem. <laughs> <laughs> you don't- you don't know! No, I'm pretty sure I know that one. Okay, so maybe I, my Holmesian deduction is not that great. It's- it's, it's flawed. It'll warm up. <laughs> uh, one thing I- oh, oh, yeah, spooky dagger. Oh, shit! Right? Someone, someone literally just died. Maybe I'm right. So, did they stab the will and the will bled? Or is it just like... That's, do you think anyone will be suspicious when they find the will covered in blood? Ah, uh, nah, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's probably legally binding. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how he signs his wills. You, you know. Yeah. Um, so, it's interesting to note that when I was installing this game on DOSBox, it asked if I had a mouse. So that's <laughs> how old this thing is. <laughs> Oh, Ken Williams. A lot of familiar names here. Obviously, Ken and Robert Williams. Uh, basically, just big names in Sierra. Um, also responsible for King's Quest, Space Quest, Police Quest, Everything Quest. Phantasmagoria. And we're kind of having a credits roll here. So, yeah. we have a butler, I see. So he's probably the murderer. Sure, why not? Maybe it's Rudy. Because maybe he's mad that he was named Rudy. It's, uh, oof. This game takes place in the 1920s, you probably have guessed. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of an interesting, like, we're, they're introducing us to all the characters. Yeah. Uh, and I guess this is, <laughs> it's going to be a ton of characters for us to try and pick out the murderer. Right? Oh, Laura Bow. So this was uh, Roberta Williams' uh detective character. Um, she was hoping to do a game series with her. It only ended up being two games. Um, I'm hoping to do the second game, because it's yeah. pretty fun. But, ooh, listen to this jazzy music. Oh, I love these graphics. It's truly the night, the Roaring Twenties. You know, and I mean, a big inspiration for Roberta Williams back in the day um, was, uh, you know, obviously at the time there were only text adventure computer games, and she wanted to be able to have animations set to the text going on screen. So, I mean, as kind of kind of dorky as it is, to have this shiny garish background, it's a pretty big uh, triumph that... I mean, for 1989. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, they didn't have that many colors to work with, so you end up with that uh, glorious orange-skinned Sierra style. Laura Bow kind of looks like E.T. right there. She does, doesn't she? Lillian looks alright, though. Mm-hmm. You know. I... So we're going off to the mansion. Alright. We're, I mean, we're trying to be a good student, but we're getting peer pressure to, uh, to go to a party or spooky mansion. I kind of love it, because Lillian's just like, yeah, come to my great uncle's, like, 
will reading. It'll be hilarious. Hell? They're in the bayou. So, yeah. come to my party. We have to take a boat there. Well, what are they going to do? It's the 1920s. It's not like they could take, like, flying car. You wouldn't be. If I, if you invite me somewhere, but you preface it with, but we have to ride a boat through a swamp. I would be pumped. I, you would You were just see boring. Me. I, I'm sorry, but I like my feet on dry ground. But, how do you get anywhere? <laughs> There's... You don't walk on water for what? Oh, I feel like stories about you have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah, well, so we're at a spooky dock. I like how the boat has a name. It's Jesse. Jesse the boat. I don't know who Jesse is. It's never mentioned. Oh, oh, crash landing. Well, yeah. Have you have you ever been on a boat? I'm pretty sure you don't steer boats directly into the well, dock. Well, no, but it generally will bump the dock. That was a pretty calamitous bump. And this is... Have you been on a boat? I have been on a boat years ago. I feel like you're not the boat authority. I... I don't know. I'm afraid of, like, deep water, and I still know more about boats than you. D I, you don't need to be a boat expert. <laughs> <laughs> you can't weigh in on your opinion of boats until you know how to make one from scratch. Well, maybe. Alright, we're getting a little off topic. We're... We're approaching the, uh, the spooky manor, the colonel's manor, I assume. Oh, whoa! Ouch. It's like Lurch. I'm pretty sure the butler did whatever is about to happen. Dinner? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I remember you, that's fine. Hmm. Fucking late. Maybe if we didn't take the fucking boat to the yeah, party. Yeah, everybody else probably just took, like, high-powered rail car. Everybody, there's probably a road leading directly to the mansion. No, they live in a swamp. Like, the, the, no, that's a plot point, because you get trapped in this horror house with no way to leave. Ah, interesting. Yeah, you're on an island. So, sort of... God, still credits. Yeah. It's very Agatha Christie. I yeah. mean, like, uh... Uh, and then there were none? Yeah. Very much like that. So there's our colonel and his uh, maidy. Sexy maid. Right? I assume she's sexy. It's she's a little French. hard to tell with these graphics. It, she's got eyelashes and big lips and boobies, so she's <laughs> probably sexy. I do appreciate they, I mean, you can see in these shots, they are trying to do uh, do something with the lighting. Yeah. Um, oh, and interesting. So the colonel is wanting to uh, figure out who his heir is going to be. So I guess that will in the credits was his. No, oh, except us. Damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Well, you gotta specify. I guess, but I thought... Oh, so, been... uh, yeah. The colonel's kind of an old curmudgeon. Alright. So everybody gets a fair piece of the pie. Uh... <laughs> and then there's the, uh, the provisio that, uh... If, if any of us... You should die, obviously. Uh, I'm not, yeah. like, encouraging it, but you'll get more money. I'm tired. I know you just wheeled me up to the, the table so I could spew plot, but bring me back. So, in, uh, this is the problem with Sierra Art. You can see the colonel's wearing a red coat, clearly, but in the close-up there, look brown. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem with working with such a limited color palette. <laughs> I just love how he's hosting this party at his house, and he just freaking rolls in, drops this bomb about the will, and then... Everybody bitches. Goes back to bed. See ya, suckers. Well, he doesn't really like them. And can you blame them? They're jerks. Why would he decide to leave any of the money then? Oh, it's the 1920s. There were social expectations, probably. I guess. <laughs> That's a nice question. Yeah. Oh, and our, our friend Lillian uh, is probably the one nice person in the room and doesn't like to hear everybody complain about her uncle being a dick. Right? Yeah. I like how they're all just like, yeah, fine. Everyone's whatever. just staring now. Yeah. Well, staring as the scene loads. <laughs> all right. So this is the uh, interesting feature of Laura Bow. Um, you work on a time system. Oh. Yeah. Um, so there are events that when you come across, they'll progress the time. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they're the right events. So you can totally... Um, just go to the wrong place, trigger the time change, and not see the event that was going on at that time. Oh, So God. the trick of this game 
Uh, there's not really any dead ends, but you can reach the end of the game without uncovering any of the plot. God, and... How... How is anyone able to figure out games like this without a walkthrough? Uh, probably weeks and weeks and weeks of trial and error. That, or you are uh, sending away for all the Sierra help books, or you are pay getting your parents to pay uh, pay a huge phone bill at the end of the month for calling the Sierra helpline. Mm, really, if you think about it, it's a good uh, good money maker. Well, and you have to think too. I mean, back in the day when these games were uh, such a novelty. You want to get your money's Look, it's worth. Daddy. Oh, that's our daddy. Yeah. Oh, uh, during the recording, there were some graphical glitches. <laughs> daddy. So, uh... Daddy, what happened? <laughs> daddy, it's me, Laura. Can you can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. So our daddy, I guess, is the detective. It's yeah. not really specified. He could mm -hmm. just be a guy who's really nosy. He's dropping some wisdom on us. Yeah. So we're gonna bring some notes around, I guess. So. Uh, is this a hint to you, the player, or to, to take notes during this, or is Lori actually going to be writing some notes to us? Uh, not really. Are you having, do you need to, there you go, honey. Oh my gosh. It's, don't even get me started on the navigation in this game. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I didn't realize at first that, uh, you could use the arrow keys to move. Ah. And so I was just using the mouse and it was terrible. <laughs> do not recommend it. Um, the only thing I end up using the mouse for in this game is if you, uh, if you right click on things, it'll, yeah, it'll give you a description of things. Okay. So I, the first time you talk or click on a character, uh, you'll get their, their little portrait and yeah. their rundown. So that's, uh... That's Ethel, and she is a friend of Lillian's mother. And no, she is Lillian's mother. Oh, I thought it's... Your friend Lillian's your mother. Your friend, oh. Yeah. And she uh, apparently is a bit of a drunkard or something, they're sort of suggesting. She, she mentioned to always have a drink in her hand. Yep. That's our friend's mother? Yep. She looks old as hell. Well, yeah. But, I mean, it was also the 1920s, and there wasn't that much uh, anti-aging stuff out there. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think that probably in the time period... She clearly looks like a grandma. I don't think this well, is maybe a she had her when matter she was like of not having 40. the right moisturizer. It could be. Maybe Did she... Well, she also drinks, so it's hard living. Mm -hmm. You know. Alright, so our friend went to mosey off to the bathroom, and she's been gone for five minutes in a murder mystery. Maybe she's dead. It's possible. I'm not going to give you any hints. <laughs> A lot of a lot of the beginning of the game is probably just me throwing out wild accusations. It's gonna be great. Is that a real cat or is that a statue? It's a fake cat. Oh. It might have been a real cat. I don't think I ever checked it out because I'm terrible. <laughs> so oh. we're just gonna like go in and uh She's plum frazzled. Sorry, I kinda skipped through that text really fast. <laughs> she is a rebellious flapper. Like you, she's twenty years old, but unlike you, I you don't know. It's way too fast. Um all right. I guess we're... <laughs> we're just going to watch her. So already it sort of feels like we're having a Clock Tower 2 sort of moment where we don't really have a clear objective at the point, so we are kind of just moseying around, seeing the sights. Yeah, all we know is that something feels off. I don't know what feels off. Um, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy with their friend. The only thing that I feel that really feels off is that our friend thought this would be a fun adventure. To go with her shitty family who hates them, well, like, hates each other. I mean, not just that, but, like, you, your shitty family, and you decide to invite your random friend to come along. Alright, I'm just gonna cut you off here, because this puzzle pisses me the hell off. How the hell are you supposed to know this? That, you, oh. Right? Okay. So, this is something you can uh, use to spy on people in the game, which is how you find out a lot of the story. Oh, neat. But there is no indication <laughs> that there is, uh, there is an armoire to pull. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like, who, like... Oh, whoa, something sexy going on? Yeah, you thought he was going to bed, and oh. he was, but he's going to bed with his maid. Damn. They are radioactive orange. <laughs> I'm so attracted to your money. I, you. Uh. <laughs> oh, Uncle Henry, you are a dope. 
Oh, this is already uncomfortable. I was kind of hoping that they would go the route of, uh, you know, oh, she seems to be only after him for his money, but no, it turns out that she's actually... But I don't know. She she just likes likes them old and decrepit. Yes. Oh well, I mean, if it's what she wants, go go for it, I guess, girl. Yeah. Snap, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Bow just kind of quietly Leaves. reflects on what she saw <laughs> and stumbles off into the wilderness. Now we're just gonna go in and make things real awkward. Oh no. So there's an elevator in this room. Okay. Yeah. Watches you suspiciously. Well, you didn't put me in your will, sir, so... Well, I mean, he's probably more like, do I smell like sex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so we're oh, gonna look at his cigar. That's why he's smoking the cigar to cover it up. Well, no, it's an after-sex cigar. But no, it's trying to cover up the... The, the sex the smell? St sex stink. Ah, oh, now this is really gross. Leave. Now it just smells like sex and cigar. Leave my mate alone. Why is, were we trying to ask him about? Yeah, um, so you, basically you can ask and you can tell and find out information about characters. Um, so we are, sort of, if you're lucky. <laughs> so we basically we're going up to this old man who we've never really been properly introduced to and telling him that, hey, uh... I know you've been uh, swapping spit with your maid. No, not even in this case. Um, yeah. We're literally just, like, asking about her. Um, just gonna wander about your room. Um, it's not weird. It's mine. Yeah. So this is Dr. Feel's room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his name's Dr. Feel's. <laughs> That's uh, the best name ever for a character. It's pretty good. So, does he have a live-in doctor who... Um, I think he's just the family doctor. Um, he's just here because he's getting money left to him. And how does this work, I guess? Because his room, you have to... Dr. Fields has to walk through the colonel's room to get to where he's staying. So, how many times do you think Dr. Fields has walked in on the colonel and Fifi? Oh, gross. Uh... Just, uh... <laughs> Probably not very much, because I'm assuming that they just arrived tonight, mm -hmm. so probably he just had dinner and they had a cookie and he'll never know. <laughs> I guess I guess everyone might be still at the dinner table. Yeah. Maybe. Is there another secret passage behind this? Oh, I don't that? know. That would, that, would, that would be kind of an unfair puzzle, don't you think? Why? you? I mean, the colonel must know that he's got hidden passages. Oh, he does. So, did he not ever consider for a moment that- Well, I doubt he'd think that someone would come into his house and pull his furniture around. Do you do that? But I mean, even still, why wouldn't you, like, plug up the holes leading to your room? Yeah, with, like, an armoire. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so we can see there that Lillian's kind of a dish. Mm hmm. And that her mother is, uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, whose hand is that? That is, uh, that is Ethel's hand. For, I thought for a minute Lillian was just stretching a giant hand. <laughs> She's like <laughs> feeding, dumping it into her mother's mouth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is, uh, what is she drinking from? Like, if you look at the glass, it looks really weird. She's doing shots. But what's attached to the shot? Uh, she must have a handkerchief in her hand, maybe? While she's drinking, I guess. Well, I mean, when you get the burps. Uh, it's just... Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, there's a lot of intrigue. Obviously, so I somebody's gonna die. There's gonna be a question of the inheritance. And at this point, I really want just somebody to murder be murdered by the butler just so my my theory is proven uh yeah i'm not gonna help you on that one <laughs> so it's worth noting that uh this game is full of death traps i'll oh, be okay. showing you an algamation of them at the end but uh if you get too close to that railing there you go right over is the uh chandelier a uh a death trap because it's kind of wiggling. Yeah, there. if uh, you'll notice that I tend to take the side of the uh, the 
downstairs yeah, instead of the middle, and that's because yeah, you can yeah get, get flattened by the crystal chandelier. Yeah, I do have to say I am liking the uh, background so far. I know the color scheme is a little uh, garish, but it's it for the me... limited color palette they had. They did great. Yeah, and there's a lot of things to sort of look at and be. Uh, a lot of detail in each of the backgrounds, and they did a nice job using the dithering to sort of try and suggest shadow. Mm -hmm. Hmm. They've got a, a good sense of uh, environment going on, for sure. It definitely feels like a big old house. Yeah. Well, and there's, I mean, so far there's been recognizable rooms, too, which was a big problem we had with uh, Clock. Clock Tower 2. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's bad when a game that is from 1989 is like, better designed than a game from, like, what, 1997? Yeah. yeah. Oh, another secret room. Yep. So, it sort of seems like this first, first act is just a lot of information gathering. Yeah. Um, presumably, I mean, again, I, I am sort of disliking how Laura doesn't really have a reason to snoop. Aside from... <laughs> I... Did she have eyes darting around in the other peepholes, too, and I never noticed? Well, we were looking up. Okay. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is Gloria and her brother. Okay. Basically, let me guess. Uncle Henry sucks. I wish I had all his money. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much their characters. It's, it feels like this is everyone's character. It, yeah, there's not many good people in this game. Yeah, and I mean, so far... Aside from Lillian and Laura, it doesn't really feel like there's a lot of, uh, these characters really have anything else to them. They're basically, we hate our uncle, we want his money, um, one of them wears a dress, others don't. There's not a lot to distinguish each character from another. No, and I don't really think there ever is, not to spoil anything, but <laughs> this isn't a, a game really about the characters so much. It's it's more about the mystery, I yeah. suppose. The mystery and the plot and figuring things out and, mm -hmm. you know. I love that smoke trail. <laughs> Just wiggling away. Yeah, it's like a hula dancer. Mm -hmm. So we find out here that uh, Gloria is uh, Dayton Clarence. Mm -hmm. um, you'll remember Clarence from the intro. Was was he the boat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we find out that Gloria has some medical issues. Mm. And Rudy's just like, yeah, whatever. Kiss, kiss. I love how he just keeps, like, raising his eyebrow. Just gonna <laughs> slide out of the frame there. <laughs> I, I, you know, I sort of wish every time Laura steps away from a people, one of my immediate reactions is to just sort of wonder what she's thinking with this information. Yeah, I wish that we'd gotten more of a, uh, like, because Laura doesn't really have a character. Mm hmm. So far, I mean, Can you she's... guess what we're going to do with this mirror? Oh. What? <laughs> It'd be awesome if you just opened it and it just fell down on the ground and shattered. shattered. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, why the hell are you moving furniture around? There's gotta be a point where Laura stops being surprised by all the uh, the hidden rooms she keeps finding in this place. I, I think she stopped at the first one. I think that she was just yeah. like, shit, there's a hidden room, there's gotta be more. Mm -hmm. So right there is uh, Clarence. Okay. And uh, Gertie. Gertie is the mother of uh, Rudy and Gloria. Okay. I, I think that uh, Rudy inherited the eyebrow wiggling. Mm -hmm. Just the one, though. Oh, yeah. Oof. I, I do like the little touches of animation. Yeah. Um, they give him a good sense of character. Yeah, and I mean, it's more visually interesting, too, while we're staring through the people. Mm-hmm. I, uh... So, I, I'm going to assume that, because uh, every time we have stepped into one of these peepholes... Um, we get the icon of the clock popping up. So I'm gonna assume if we didn't look into the peephole at the correct time, we would not be seeing the scene. Right, exactly. The okay. other thing is, is if I didn't go into the peephole and instead I went into the room, mm -hmm. that would move the time along and I wouldn't see the conversation because you go into the room and they stop talking. Ah, Obviously. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. 
You'll kind of see a better uh, example of this later in the game. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, basically, uh, we have found out that everyone's a big jerk. Hmm. And, uh, Clarence apparently has some scam going on with a racehorse somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, again, this is- I feel like I should be making a chart to chart everybody's relationship to each other, and I, I'm going to assume that part of the mystery is going to be taking all the clues from the intrigue we have and somehow applying it to whatever is going to happen. No. <laughs> they they will, uh, from what I was reading, they'll, they do that in the second game, oh. which I'm hoping to play as well. Hmm. Um, so that one actually becomes a bit more harder and it's more about the mystery. But this one, uh, it's more like you're finding out the story for the benefit of you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's... You can still solve the game, it just won't be as satisfactory as if you had done all the peoples. Well, yeah, because you won't know everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I we're outside now. I wonder how uh, Lillian's uncle feels about us just wandering his property. Ah, he's probably fine with it. <laughs> I don't think he gives a shit. Yeah. He's busy with the maid again, I'm sure. Probably. So, so far, we haven't picked up any items. Nope. And I'm sort of at a loss. I This is so unlike any Sierra game I've played. Yeah, it's it's very different. Hmm. Um, is, is item collection not a big part of Laura Bow here? Um, no it is. Uh, it's just not generally as you have to solve a puzzle to progress. Mm -hmm. It's more that you have to solve a puzzle to get information. Okay. Yeah. Ramshackle, that's a playhouse? Yeah, man. God, that's probably half the size of my real house. Right? That's the rich. I, I could live in there happily. Ah, and there's another house! No, this is a horse house. <laughs> Wait, no, this isn't a horse house. This is a car house. Okay. Yeah. A garage. Ah. But it's called a carriage house in this case. <laughs> 1920s fancy speak. Obviously run down as all heck. And then there's the other boat, Jesse's cousin Minnow. Oh. Well, that boat looks way more sturdy. Yeah. Why couldn't we have taken that boat? Because the colonel is a jerk. He doesn't want to give you his boat. Oh. Oh my god, our, our first item and we're not close enough. <laughs> Even though we're clearly right there. We have to block the view of it with our body. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. We have an oil can now. Heaven knows what we're going to use it for. <laughs> Heaven knows what Laura thinks we're going to use it for. She has oh, no God, reason yeah. to start grabbing stuff. Well, and again, we i mean, we have no reason to do anything other than, I guess, Laura is just inquisitive and bored. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what Lillian thought they were going to do out here. Yeah. Like. I, I guess Lillian probably just wanted a friend to come along to save her from her crappy shitty family. Shitty family, yeah. Good old Sierra puzzles. Oh, yes. Yep. You have to examine everything because you never know what item might be hidden from view. Right. Uh, King's Quest IV, which I believe was probably made around the same time as this game, judging by the graphics, has a infamous puzzle where, uh, once a similar to that one, there is an item hidden by a bit of scenery and you have to basically know it's there in order to uh, pick it up. My god. Oh, was that a flash of lightning or... Yeah, is there or a... possible there's fireworks going on. It's oh. it's hard to say. Hmm. Someone's having an impromptu firework party. There's a happy little squirrel. The weird bell tower. <laughs> yeah, what is the bell tower for? Uh, I just feel like ringing something. You never know. He's he's rich. He probably just does shit. Has his eccentricities. Yeah. Does he have his own church? He has his own church. It's oh. a graveyard, technically, behind it. I guess where all the people are buried. That's usually what graveyards are for, yes. Shut up. <laughs> so now we're in a church with, uh... Yeah. Old-style DOS music. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets, uh... It's very dramatic music. Well, it's a church. Is, is somebody playing an organ somewhere? Oh, probably. <laughs> Are we gonna give a sermon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
We're a woman, though. I don't think that's allowed. Not, no, not in the 1920s. No. Yeah. So this is another really annoying puzzle. Is there... something in a pew? <laughs> no. That would be way too easy. Oh. I see, and obviously, yes, use the crowbar. On the floorboards. Hmm, because it was you obvious. You have to specify the floorboards. Ah. <sighs> These are, this is why text parsers are really irritating. Yeah. You have to be so specific. Well, and oftentimes it's a difference of uh, having something as a verb or it's... Like, I'm, I had to use pry there. Yeah. Like, I can't just say use it. It has to be pry it. Sierra, um, there's some interesting stories from Aulo, the creator of the Leisure Suit Larry series, uh, regarding the text parser system. Um, in particular with, I believe it is Leisure Suit Larry 2, where, uh, he tried, uh, y you, you have to basically program every possible iteration of a key phrase, and in one puzzle, um, unfortunately that was, something was overlooked and, uh, led to sort of the issue that Genghis just had, where, um, t unless you are very specific about um, how you phrase a a sentence, it's not going to register, and it's just going to leave you confused, and Sierra's hotline is going to get flooded by people who don't know how to make a Molotov cocktail out of an air sick egg. Well, it's obvious, really. Yeah. <laughs> so we just got a list there talking about the croutons, who I guess lived here before. <laughs> croutons? Cr croutons? Whatever. <laughs> Cr oh, let's go with croutons. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Crouton. Mm -hmm. Crouton. So I guess Laura is just the kind of person who goes into your house and <laughs> pries up floorboards. Oh, she's the person that, uh, she's the one snooping in your medicine cabinet. Yeah. Like, you know she would be. Is she, now, we might have missed this at the beginning, but I, I know she's a student, but is she a reporter of some sort? Is she... Is it established somewhere that she has a curiosity and kind of a drive to investigate? Not in the game proper. Maybe in supplemental material. Hmm. Which you know you know my pet peeve with that. Oh, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess in this case they had a lot less work or stuff to work with. Mm hmm I don't know. It still annoys me. I think you should be able to encapsulate all the stuff you want to say. Yeah. If it's an important plot element, then it should be in the game somewhere. Mm -hmm. Though I do feel like they're doing a decent job about their laying plot points out. Um, we're, we're not really establishing character, but we're establishing some backstory and some motives of character. Mm -hmm. um, Which works for a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. So we can see there that the colonel keeps a gun on his desk in a little case. Mm hmm. I'm going to just take a closer look at it. All right. I'm watching the maid because I'm sort of amazed at... I think they uh, attempted to put some jiggle into her sprite, which, for a game of this time, it's sort of uh, fascinating, actually. Yeah. She we, definitely has a specific way she walks. To think of jiggle physics being present in, uh, quote-unquote, you know, quote jiggle physics <laughs> in 1989... It's ahead of its time. Yeah. Yeah. So, more weapons. Ooh, a boomerang. Right? A.K.A. something that I'm not entirely convinced actually works. <laughs> I've I, never seen anyone throw a boomerang, so I couldn't. Not I in real life. I feel as though boomerangs are just a trick played on us by Australian people. <laughs> that they don't actually work. It's just movie magic. Yeah. I've, I've never seen one being able to be thrown successfully in real life. Yeah, I have to. I'm with you there. Mm -hmm. So there's Jeeves walking in. I figured I'd look at Fifi. Vivacious personality, but you can sense a certain cunning underneath it all. Well, the, I will say that about any of the Frenchmen. They are quite cunning. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's it's the Dr. Dogger. Feels. Yeah. Dr. Feels good. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, apparently. That's a mean thing to wonder about someone, if he ever samples his own wares. Like, what drove you to that conclusion, Laura? Lord. You are judgmental. Yeah. We're just gonna creep Sup. around him. 
that is one thing. Like, if I was standing talking to them, they still don't say anything interesting. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, get the fuck out of my face. I do, I do appreciate how, uh, and I know it's just, I mean, it's part of the game, but we kind of just slink around him in the room and we don't engage him at all. It's <laughs> incredibly rude if this, this were to actually happen in real life. So that was the dining room. Hmm. But we don't want to be oh. there right now. That was a nice touch, actually. I don't know if you noticed, but I, we walked past the yeah, mirror. Yeah, you, you see her in the mirror briefly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Touche, Sierra. Touche. Hmm. There are some nice touches. Uh, Sierra, usually with their backgrounds around this time, they do try and put something animated in them. Just to sort of give it a little more life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is Clarence. Mm -hmm. Who's dating Gloria. And he's the colonel's attorney. Mm -hmm. That's a decanter of cognac. All right. And that is Jeeves. Oddly enough, you can't really look at Jeeves right now. Oh, and that is the same painting that we kind of spied in on. That's sort of a nice uh, visual indicator of which room is which, actually. Mm hmm So they've done some interesting things, and I mean, if there'd been more indication that there was a secret passage, I would be super fond of that puzzle, but... Mm hmm Yeah, I wonder if maybe a lot of, uh... A lot of games, when they have a secret passage, they will do a, uh, you know, you see scratch marks in the floor to sort of indicate that something is being moved. Yeah. Maybe if they had done something like that. So now we're oiling the mask so we can open it. Why the heck not, I <laughs> guess. I, uh... I don't know what that... Oh, a valve, okay. Yeah, I don't know why, but it's there. It looked very strange. <laughs> So a note from the croutons. <laughs> croutons. We knew you would look in the armor. Oh, I know. What if she didn't, though? And I don't think she did, because the valve was still there. Mm -hmm. Good job, jerks. Oh, that's kind of sad. They, this Sarah might nev never have seen the message. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Or the valve handle. That's why you don't hide things in suits of armor that require oiling to open. <laughs> <laughs> well, it probably didn't require oiling back then. Never know. Might have just rusted shut. Yeah, I mean, it does mention that uh, Colonel Henry did not really take care of this place, and it's kind of decrepit and shitty. Yeah. So that's it for Act 1. Mm -hmm. uh, join us next time for Act 2, where hopefully something will happen and murder? Maybe. <laughs>